Mm. Hello guys, can you can you see my screen? Yes. Good. Yes, Federico. Good. Hello guys, how are you? I'm super excited about uh, this day. Um, and want really you to see the teams that uh, we are incubating at, at Cleros. Let me just uh, to start just some very short introduction to what mm -hmm. the incubator is, so you know a bit more about this. Um, so as you know, um, Cleros has this vision of becoming a distribution layer for for the Web3 ecosystem in many different types of use cases involving well commerce, finance, social media, and the work we do at, uh, at Cleros is basically try to expand our ecosystem. This is what it looked like um, kind of uh, uh, two years ago, and this is how the ecosystem has been growing by connecting more and more uh, protocols and apps uh, into uh, Cleros uh, for securing them. And so how, how do, to keep supporting the growth of, of this ecosystem we have been building? Uh, and well, one of the answers that we came up with is, well, let's launch a, an incubator. Uh, let's try to start uh, supporting different people who want to start building stuff on top of Cleros. And so this is how we launched the, the, the first uh, cohort uh, sign up process in July 2021. Uh, I launched this on, on stage during my, my talk at the ETHCC conference. And um, the goal is, as I said, try to support projects that are being built on, on top of Cleros to bring more, more cases and to bring more value secured by, by the protocol. So who, who is this for? Um, anyone who is working on some project that might require Cleros for, for some of the different use cases that Cleros has, could be on the cases of escrow, uh, the case of uh, curation of, or Oracle. So as you know, Cleros has different use cases. So if you are trying to build a, a case on one of those and you could use Cleros for resolving cases, then potentially this could be of, of interest for you. And um, how does this work? Um, so first, uh, you apply with your team uh, with a form that is on our website and that I will share with you later. And then there is a process of, of course, uh, due diligence that we do and a process of interviews that you have to go through. And if you are accepted, then you get to spend three months in Lisbon with the housing, travel and office space um, expenses covered by the Claros Cooperative and you get to live into this beautiful city of, of Lisbon. And if you haven't been there, I really recommend it. And not just in Lisbon, but you get to work at probably the coolest place uh, of in Lisbon, which is the Block um, Cafe, uh, where, well, Claros office in Lisbon is. And you have all this amazing community of builders that uh, are there. Um, every day uh, building the future of, of the web three um i also wanted to share this really cool uh, photo of <laughs> photo, uh, image of the um, of the backyard at the at the block um on on top of this you also get 50k in funding from the cooperative players to get your project um, going uh and of course a number of of workshops where you get to have the support of the players team in many different um, things that go from strategy design, like how to interview users, how to prototype, how to build your interfaces, uh, building like secure smart contracts, uh, Web3 development, uh, marketing, um, legal advice from our legal team. So it's a very comprehensive um, program where you get to uh, address the different um, problems that you have to solve with your project so uh, and with all the expertise that we have a we have acquired at Cleros uh, well for in the four years we have been working building a, a web3 project um, and so I can give you some vibes of, of what this looks like so this is um, the opening of the uh, cohort that we did that, that is ending now uh, this is the um, the block and this was the first workshop that we did 
with these teams of um, this cohort. Um, so this is what it, it looks like. You get to, well, do some design thinking and do some um, deep thinking of all of the aspects of your project with, with us, with the, the team at Cleros. And also you have some um, uh, like uh, online workshops. This one was a user interface workshop that was um, coordinated by our master of design, uh, Plinio. And of course, this is a day where the program ends and the moment where the teams get to, um, well, show what they have been working on. So we have invited a bunch of friends of, of Cleros. Some of them are also investors and well, people who want to, to see what um, the incubated projects have been working on. So the, and after, after the, the demo day, there is also the cooperative has 1 million dollar pool uh, fund for potential follow-up funding on the projects that participate. So today we are going to have uh, presentations by the two projects that we have incubated in this first cohort. So first we will have Open Vino and how they are using Claro's curation in order to build a better certification for organic wine and beyond. And then we'll have a reactions that is a, a very cool project which works on social and NFTs. And so without further ado, I'm going to uh, just uh, give the stage to the first uh, team that's going to present today. So uh, Open Vino, stage is yours now. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Federico. Yeah, wonderful to, to be here today with you all. Uh, so my name is uh, Mike Dango Bravo. Uh, I'm an organic wine producer in Mendoza, Argentina. Um, I own a boutique winery called Costa Flores, started making wine in 2003. And we started working on Open Vino in 2016. So today uh, I want to share with you um, the Open Vino project, but uh, going into some specifics, of what we call bio-digital certification. This is what we're working on. Uh, with Cleros, really taking a lot of the, the curation process the, uh, for Cleros and combining it with some of the tools that we've already built for Open Vino. So before I get into biodigital certification, just let me give a, a little bit of background, uh, an explainer on what Open Vino is all about. So Open Vino is a, a platform that we developed basically to address three questions from the wine industry. Uh, one has to do with, uh, could we enable drinkers, consumers, to determine the correct price of a bottle of wine, right? Using uh, the forces of supply and demand and considering that wine is such a unique or interesting uh, product that's apt for tokenization. Um, you know, wine is uh, Interesting because it's very elastic in price. You have very expensive wines and very cheap wines and everything in the middle. Um, and you have a built-in scarcity for each vintage. There's only so many bottles that you produce a year. And wine is one of the odd products that generally gets better over time until it doesn't. It has an interesting curve. So it makes it a really interesting product for, for, for talking about price. And so that's one of the first questions. The, the second big question has to do with is there a way can we get into people's minds that are drinking wine? What do they think about the wine that they have in their glass? What is their opinion? How are they drinking these wines? And really uh, do some traceability to the very end point. And the third question, which is kind of our focus today, has to do with uh, claims that wineries make. You know, more and more we see in our products uh, claims about, you know, is it sustainable? Is it carbon neutral or is it organic or is it, uh, app for vegans and these kinds of things. Uh, wineries do this in even more, right? Uh, where the provenance, where the grapes from, how the, the varietals and stuff. So is there a way that we can test the claims of the truthfulness of wineries? Can we know if a wine is authentic? And so these are really the three initial questions that came out of Open Vino. I'll just explain these three different paths that we call tokenization, traceability, and transparency, which talk about this pricing, uh, opinions and, and authenticity, right? And so we'll briefly go through each one of these. In the case of tokenization, this is pretty much how it works. So um, in our case, uh, we harvest our grapes uh, every year in March, in the Southern Hemisphere. 
and uh, do a pretty traditional winemaking process. This goes throughout the month of, of April. So by the end of April, we pretty much know how many bottles of wine are going to come out of this uh, vintage, out of this year. And from that, uh, the beginning of May, specifically on the 6th of May, we do what's called a vintage coin offering every year, where we issue a number of fungible tokens, ERC20 tokens, uh, equivalent to the number of bottles of wine from that vintage. This goes through a crowd sale with our smart contract on Viniswap, which is our platform. Um, and people can buy those tokens starting on the 6th of May. And starting on the 25th of July, those tokens are still available for sale, but now they can people can buy and sell. Um, basically, we're a front end for Uniswap for a decentralized exchange. So this allows people to affect the price of the tokens over time. Now, the wine already exists, it's a real thing, but wine needs time before it's ready to be uh, consumed. In our case, we generally wanna wait about three years before people start redeeming these tokens, start burning these tokens to receive the actual physical bottles. And so this is the process that we started in 2018 with our first VCO. We've done four tokens already. And this year in 2022, we're incorporating other wineries and other wines in different countries to show how this model can work beyond uh, Costa Flores. The traceability, how can we go from vine, wine, dine, mind is the second aspect. And here we wanna capture people's opinions. So what we're doing is on the bottle, we have a serialized QR code. Uh, this means that every bottle is different as a unique uh, identifier. Uh, consumers, drinkers can scan the bottle. This takes them to an app where we ask them questions about who they are, where they are, take a selfie with the bottle and answer five questions about their wine drinking experience, specifically with this bottle. So it's kind of a KYC of a wine drinker, quite invasive in a way, but what we're giving them in exchange for their feedback, their opinion is one share of the company through a fiduciary trust. And this is all manifested in a minted NFT, which, uh, basically is kind of like a Pope token for drinkers, right? It's documenting with their selfie, with their questions, the moment they're consuming this bottle and they're receiving a share of the company. By receiving a share of the company, they become actual owners of the liquid in your glass. And this is why we call it, you drink it, you own it. And then there's a part of transparency. And this is where we tie in with Cleros. So transparency, uh, what we're doing is collecting uh, data from IoT sensors in the vineyard or in the winery, uh, a 360 degree camera, which can take images uh, periodically of what happens in the vineyard or in the winery, a work log that uh, workers can register very simple tasks that they're doing, and any other kinds of analytics or accounting, like what, how much did we spend on, on the bottle, on the label, on the cork, on the capsule, all this information to be able to publish this on a Web3 platform and using uh, Ethereum as a, the blockchain as a uh, mechanism through a zero knowledge uh, aggregation of data to be able to have a non-repudiation element. In other words, we're publishing this data, but once this data is written, it can't be modified and anyone can validate that this information is authentic. So why is this interesting? Well, if we combine this with Kleros, and I won't go into Kleros, you all know Kleros, but uh, Kleros is you know, used as a, a dispute res resolution mechanism. Here, we're basically using it as a way for a challenger to go to a winery who's making a self-certification claim, maybe self-claiming to be organic. So essentially in the case of organic, if we take three different pillars of data, like what is organic, a very clear definition, these artifacts that Open Vino provides and a challenger bounty that's managed by Cledos, we have what's called biodigital certification. Open Vino and Cleros have teamed up to create biodigital certification, a revolutionary way for producers to self-certify organic wines for free. But first, let's take a look at how the current organic certification system works. Hey everybody, look. My wine is organic. Uh, aren't you forgetting something? Huh? All right. Here you go. Hey, everyone. His wine is organic. See you next year. 
Who is that guy? Yeah, what does organic mean anyway? Is this real? So now, let's see how organic biodigital self-certification with OpenVINO and Kleros works. Hey everybody, look, my wine is organic. And this is what it means for a wine to be called organic. And here is my proof, with OpenVINO data on the blockchain. And not only that, if you don't believe me, challenge me. Because I put my money where my wine is. I think you're lying, and here's my evidence. Hey everyone, my wine is organic. No you're not. Biodigital certification is free, unless you're a cheater. It shouldn't cost you money to do the right thing. Extreme transparency makes the world a better place with biodigital certification. Find out more at openvino.org. So there you have the idea of what we're talking about with uh, biodigital certification. Um, this obviously benefits the wineries because it's a, uh, it eliminates a lot of cost and friction for them to self-certify and make all kinds of different claims, but also for the buyers, for the supply chain, for influencers, for wine critics, for anybody that wants to be able to, to make a, a claim about something and know that they're telling the truth. And this actually even works with regulators. If you think about, you know, when you buy a Malbec from Mendoza, Argentina, or one from Rivera del Duero or Bordeaux, right? There's a regulator in between that's trying to guarantee that that is actually really what the, what the label says. So if we think about those different uh, players and the stakeholders in the space, how can we have this fuel a, a, a network growth effect on this? Well, first of all, obviously there's the cost element for the wineries. There's a reputation upgrade for people that are talking about the wines, but also we can even imagine uh, wineries creating their own types of certificates based on, on other elements and being able to self curate within uh, Kleros and, and Open Vino with biodigital certification, whatever it is that they're doing that is special and differentiates them from um, other wineries. So let's talk a little bit about the numbers. Um, we're talking about a $400 billion industry worldwide. Um, but what's really interesting about the wine, uh, the wine world is that it's a highly fragmented industry. So we're talking about 70, 80,000 plus wineries in the world. Yes, there are some very big players in the wine world, but there's a lot of small and medium-sized wineries uh, scattered around the planet. And so this makes it really interesting from this point of view, not just large conglomerates. Um, and they're competing for all different types of certifications, not just the traditional organic, vegan, uh, uh, carbon neutral, but also uh, specific things about wine. Uh, finally, wine is a really ideal uh, market to disrupt in the certification space uh, because there's a little bit more of a tolerance for, for self-claims as compared to like, let's say certifying milk or soy or some other commodities where it's more of a black and white kind of standard. So how do we monetize uh, Open Vino? I'm happy to go within, I won't go into the details here, but just let's say that uh, Open Vino is, is open source and it's not a software licensing model, we're not selling software. Uh, so basically we're providing these tools free to the wineries and uh, monetizing them in other ways, which I'm happy to share, and also explain how our model uh, works for paying out earnings to investors uh, through an open Vino DAO. Um, so I won't go into those now, but those are uh, certainly th things that we thought out and, and worked through. Uh, we also know where we are today and what it is we need to do to scale. Um, and basically what type of team that we need to work with. Now, um, Without going into the details, our team is multidisciplinary. We're not just blockchain space people or IT people, but also uh, in you know, deep experience with the wine world, with organic wine, with other types of certifications, uh, with the export model, and also uh, with all the legal ramifications that go beyond the bunch of legal questions that we have with crypto assets, but also with uh, certifications and whatnot. Um, so that in combination with uh, different allies we're working with uh, means that we've got a fairly good depth of uh, people 
that are thinking about the difficult questions here. So um, again, also happy to share, we've got quite a clear roadmap. This is uh, something we'll be presenting uh, hopefully at SCC this year in July um, and making this public and also in the wine world. So it's not just about talking to the, the crypto space or the blockchain space, but certainly focus on, on the, this $400 billion industry. So I just like to leave you with uh, this last point here, which is what does open vino change? Essentially, we are changing how we sell wine, how we certify it, and how we value both in price and in quality. So what is that worth to a $400, uh, $400 billion industry? And is now the right time to disrupt it? Um, we certainly believe so. And that's why we're working and, and happy to be doing this uh, project with Kledos. So thanks very much. Any questions? Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. So we have um, time like for one or two questions. If you have, like, um, you can just ask them here. <laughs> I love that demo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe Mike, you can um, just speak for one minute about what it was for you to be in the incubator because many people here may want to apply. So tell them ah, about how you saw the process, how it helped you. Yeah, it was a wonderful uh, process to go through to, I mean, very uh, flexible and open, but also, you know, good to be able to bounce ideas off and hear. I mean, you you all have been so through so many of the, the, the scaling questions and the uh, legal questions and the implementation questions with Kleros. Um, and so it was, a, it was quite helpful for us to, to build in, uh, interact with the team on, on that. Um, I think we, we got quite a lot out of it and have a pretty clear idea where, where we are and what we need to do next. Um, so I'd certainly uh, recommend anyone that's, that has a project that, that could interact with Glitos and, you know, this, it, this is like a big toolkit that you could do all kinds of really interesting things with um, to, to participate in the in the, the incubator program. Well, do you have any questions, guys? Or you can write them if you want here, feel free. Um, I would give you like 30 more seconds for that. Uh, if there are sure. no, no questions. Yeah, I pushed through a lot of information there, but uh, we're certainly <laughs> open to do a, a deep dive in any one of these aspects um, of anyone who's, who's interested. Um, and uh, we've got some of our links there in the chat as well. There's a question there. Uh, yeah, so how the, would the DAO and governance tokens work? Right, so essentially, uh, because the revenue model involves uh, essentially with the tokenization, uh, transparency and traceability, uh, money coming in through, through these different aspects, um, and by the way, wineries don't have to subscribe to all of them. There can be wineries that are only interested in biodigital certification, others that want to do tokenization, but not deploy sensors and all this other work, and some that want to do NFTs. Basically, revenue that's uh, received through OpenVINO is then paid out to uh, members of a DAO um, through a governance token. And so basically, we're, list, uh, we're issuing a limited number of, of governance tokens um, as part of the division in between investment and, and funds that we need to sustain and also to promote certain, certain participants. Um, so whatever comes in goes paid out directly to the uh, governance token holders. Uh, rather than doing the traditional you know, uh, fundraising where we're giving out uh, shares in a private company in Argentina, um, we decided just to uh, directly apply the, uh, a very simple DAO model of um, paying out directly to, to token holders. Um, so 2022 is the, basically our, our step this year, aside from presenting uh, biodigital certification to the world later this year, um, is onboarding wineries, first in Argentina, Spain, Chile. Uh, we're talking to just to do a handful of other wineries this year and then have a self-provisioning platform 
such that wineries, uh, a larger scale, uh, can can come on board with Open Vino. Some for certification, some for tokenization, some for all of these. Um, so we're quite excited about that. Um, but you know, the first time we presented uh, Open Vino was in New Delhi in 2017 at uh, the Organic World Congress there, which is basically uh, certifiers that went there. And my presentation basically started and say, hi guys, we're gonna talk about blockchain and something that's going to put certifiers out of business. So it's about eliminating that friction. Doesn't mean that there's not a role going forward with certifiers, but it's certainly, it's that, it's that middleman that's that, uh, having this decentralized platform uh, facilitates uh, working around. Uh, the question about will we work with uh, regulators? Uh, certainly. So we're working with, like, I'll give you two examples with INV, which is uh, the National Wine Institute in Argentina. They've come forward and said, could you help, could we help uh, facilitate any winery in, in Argentina using Open Vino? Um, and by the way, Argentina is the fifth or sixth largest wine producing country in the world. So it's, it's uh, substantial. Um, that's a government agency that we're basically saying, here are the tools for you guys to use these and to make uh, you know, it easier to attest claims about authenticity and opening these different pricing models. Uh, another agency we're working with is uh, uh, specific regulators and regions. Um, in, in Spain, for example, the Denominación de Origen, the Apelación in France, you know, these are regions that have real incentive to protect a brand uh, from fraud. And so this is a, a, another tool for them as well. Last question, Mike, because we have to go to the other team, but you can take this one, uh, last one. Sure, so the, the traceability elements, um, like I said, we're using a, uh, we're currently on, on the, strictly on Ethereum, but what, what we're doing is, capturing drink exper drinkers experience, segregating the, the private data from the, the, the opinions. And the reason by the way we collect, uh, we do a KYC of the drinking experience is because we're actually giving them a, a legal share of the winery. Um, and this has been a really interesting experiment that we've done with uh, lawyers and how do you go about doing that? Um, and so at the end of the day, we, we can mint that on an NFT uh, for, uh, for them to document their drinking experience, to have the share, uh, to be the shareholder. And, and also it's a kind of a fun way to, to quickly mint an NFT of a selfie of you drinking, drinking wines with your friends, kind of a, a Pope token of drinker sort of thing. So um, thanks a lot. We'll uh, put some links in there. Anyone wants to reach out, I'm certainly happy to, uh, to follow up and, and have a one-on-one -on -one call with anyone. So thank you very much. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, Mike. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, and if you need to uh, get in touch with Mike, there in the chat you have the data contact. And also we can introduce you if you want. So thank you very much. And let's go to our second team, uh, Gia and Greg. They have been working on uh, reactions and they're going to tell you how they are mixing NFTs and social. So you're there, Gia, right? Um, yeah, I saw you before. Yep, so, I'm yeah, here. Good, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> good? It's really so great. Your, like yours. Yep, um, it's been really great working with Pleros and also being part of the incubator. Um, yeah, like Open Vino, that was, it was really great great to see the progress and also hear about like the roadmap earlier. Um, so let me share my screen. I can tell you guys a bit about reactions. So as I'm sure most of you guys know, um, have been looking at NFT space, there has been an explosion, explosion last year in, um, within NFT and also as a way to kind of like get new people into Web3 is really kind of found um, more mass adoption for the crypto space. Um, just the first six months alone of last year, uh, NFT sales hit 2.5 billion and there has been just new projects um, being launched every day, every week. Um, and 
we at Reactions really think that this is the beginning of NFTs disrupting how culture is created and monetized, and as they are really the one of the core foundational blocks of Web3. But we see a lot of problems, of course, uh, like any new um, and early um, ecosystem and, and space, there's a lot of things and a lot of work to be done. Um, this is kind of, it's also very exciting for us because it's a new design space um, for us and for everybody as well um, who are building within this space. Um, some of the problems that we're seeing is, it's just so overwhelming to keep track of all the projects. Um, people who are trying to participate, trying to get into the space, it's very hard to figure out like where to get started um, for people that are within the space already and trying to keep track of what's going on. It's, it's pretty much impossible <laughs> to, to really have um, a, a clear idea of like, uh, and being able to just see all the projects and being able to um, uh, find the signal amongst the noise. Um, there's a lacking of uh, curation across different categories. Um, there's little exposure and discovery for new projects, especially projects that um, doesn't already have a lot of following on Web2 social platforms. Our solution is a NFT social curation protocol and platform where we merge uh, Web2 social platform ideas with um, Web3 token incentives. Um, I'll show you guys a live demo in a little bit and you'll see some of um, the, the functionalities have changed a little bit, but like the high level idea is um, members show appreciation by sending reaction tokens, uh, which are 1155 tokens to each other's NFTs as a way to appreciate them. Collectors can find um, the signal through these reactions and find the most loved NFTs. And appreciators or curators, they can earn a fee when those NFTs are sold. And we really built this with communities in mind. So the type of communities that can work are collectible communities, which are NFT gated, other DAO communities, which can also be NFT gated or ERC20 gated, um, and custom communities that are not already on chain. Part of our goal is to onboard new people to the NFT and crypto space. As I mentioned, we really think that NFT is kind of the entry point for, for this world, especially for non-technical and creative people. Um, so we want to make it fun and simple to discover and curate. Um, and we're really focused on like designing around existing user behaviors that from things that they're used to in Web2 already. So we, for the last um, month and a half, um, during while we were in the Plurals uh, incubator, we have been testing with a small community that we call Alpha Club. Um, and this is actually NFT uh, gated club. Um, so you can kind of see what, uh, I'll give a quick demo on some of the features here. Um, so for instance, the latest ones, um, you can see these are some NFTs that have been curated by our community members. Um, so for instance, here I have like 14 tokens. I only have this mind exploding tokens. Uh, let me show you my bag right now. So I've used up a lot of my tokens already. Um, you can view the tokens on OpenSea. Like I mentioned, these are 155 tokens. Um, so I have 14 of these uh, mind exploding tokens last. So let me take a look at ones that other people have curated with mind exploding. Um, so I think this one's pretty cool. Uh, this one's really cool. So I can send the tokens um, and, and then while I'm waiting for this token to be sent over uh, via layer two, um, I can react to other, um, other NFTs as well. I can browse. Let me show you guys what has been the top curated within our Alpha Club sub registry. So um, this one is from a community called Uga, and they're very big on mushrooms and dinosaurs. So you can see there were a lot of um, community members from this, this specific NFT community. Um, and then over here, um, this is a project. I can open it up. You can see who owns it, who created it, um, the comments. And also, we basically use um, these reaction tokens to 
figure out an impact score for each reaction. Um, and people can, um, uh, this is how we basically rank um, all of the members. Let me try to curate sample. So let's say if I want to manually curate something into this registry, and copy in and uh, open C URL. So we are supporting um, interactive um, NFTs, 3D, and also video as as well as audio. So I it will cost me a reaction token that I have to send um, to this NFT, and I just have to include a I have to include uh, hashtags. And now I can curate this into our list. So you can see over here in the activity that I had sent two tokens earlier to this NFT. Um, now when you go here, you can see that, yeah, this is part of the history now. We also, by allowing our members to add comments with um, each reaction that they send, um, we provide more context around why people find an NFT interesting or cool. We also have uh, dynamic um, hashtags here, which further helps to organize all the NFTs within this specific community. So here it is. And this is an interactive one, which is pretty cool. You can find out all the information about this NFT and click into OpenSea to see more. Nice. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet, so getting a little hungry seeing this. So a little bit about our team. Um, my previous background in Web3 uh, was really more on the gaming side. I was a co-creator of Eternal, a dungeon crawler game on uh, that was fully on chain on Ethereum. Before that, um, I had uh, really started my career before Web3 and even tech um, in advertising um, as in on the art and creative direction side. Uh, Greg, my partner, um, have a lot of experience. Uh, um, starting out in the Web2 space, having helped build knowyourmeme.com, and he was the first product designer at BuzzFeed. We both come from a kind of creative and design background, so really, like I mentioned, just excited to work in this kind of op open sky space where there are a lot, there's a lot of possibilities in terms of how we can shape and define what the user experience would be like for um, people in the space. How can we solve some of these uh, problems for everyone? Our roadmap um, is we started uh, last year at ECC um, ha Hackathon, which was sponsored by uh, Clearos, um, and we were the winner for that hackathon. And since then, we've released our V0 soft uh, release on Polygon, um, and we started testing, iterating our features with our Alpha Club communities. Um, right now, we're still uh, we're in this process of um, making some more updates and changes to this. Um, there are some things based on the data that uh, we found, and just seeing and talking to our community members, there are certain things that we found that are more useful and less useful, and just uh, finalizing in terms of for our V1 launch this year. Um, um, so we're looking for more testers. Um, please come join us and um, and test out test this out with us if you're interested. Um, we're also looking to hire uh, back end and front end developers. So anyone who's interested in the social NFT space, uh, please reach out to us. Thank you. Are there any questions? Questions, feel free to ask them or you can write them if you prefer. Um, in the meantime, Gia, maybe tell people a bit about how was the incubator for you. Yeah. 
Um, I think so. Like uh, Mike had mentioned, it was it was really great because it was very flexible. Um, first of all, it was also very nice uh, to move to Lisbon. It's a beautiful, amazing, really chill city, um, and the space, uh, uh, the block was great as well. Um, we ended up working a lot of times just from different coffee shops in the city as well. So it it was really great being able to uh, work in this flexible within a very flexible like time frame um, and. Uh, and Clarels has been, the whole team has been really accessible. So answering questions, like when we had question about uh, reacting, how we can calculate the on-chain impact score, um, it was like, yeah, like it was very easy for us to just like shoot an email, get answers and and being able to like work with Clement um, and also the rest of the team on and asking questions about legal um, and, and learning from Federico has been like, I, I think it was very, very helpful. And to just also hear from existing projects that have already years of experience in the space, it, I think that's very valuable. And, and we're really um, happy that we went through this experience. Good. Um, I, a question I have for both teams, and this is on, on behalf of um, many community members, how can can people like buy into your project? I mean, can they buy tokens and how, how does it work? Is this a question specific to reactions or both? First reactions and then of course, uh, yeah, turn to open bin as well. So you mean how people can buy into yeah. like participate by? Invest yes. and be part of the, of the adventure, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, so we we have uh, um, since the last hackathon, we raised our uh, pre seed or seed round. Um, so moving forward, as we're kind of finalizing for our V one, we are looking to uh, uh, finalize on our token design, and we will release more information on the token side and how um, people can participate in the future. Mike. Great. Uh, uh, for us, basically, it's uh, three ways. We're working with uh, interested uh, parties, wineries, and whatnot that are interested in, in involving in this in process. Um, looking for some investment for, for scaling up, and that's part of the Open Vino DAO that we're working on now, the a governance token. And of course, uh, by buying and drinking wine. Um, so that's uh, the best way, right? To, to uh, work. Selling wine to wine wine tokens. Um, currently, we have the four vintages of of our wine from Costa Flores, but we'll be adding wineries this year, um, different styles, and in different countries that that people can try as well. Um, so that would be the the three ways, and, and certainly everyone is invited. We've, we're publishing all of our uh, backend and how we're building it onto a, a public wiki as well called wikicostaflores.com, um, and so. Um, this is quite quite open. The idea is to re, to respect in every step of the way, the the open source element of this and in transparency, not on, only in the service that we're providing, but in the development of the project itself. Good. Uh, thank you. We have time for like one final question. So if anyone wants to ask something to, um, well, to any of us basically. Uh, feel free, we have like, we'll give you like 30 seconds to ask a question. I think I see a question from Isaac. Yeah. Um, for, yeah, so for uh, Reactions uh, Alpha Club, uh, right now, uh, one is like being the first ones to see any new features. So our plan is to um, uh, basically in the next couple of weeks to open up the platform so that it is publicly viewable and allowing people to like everybody to see it. But then any new features, upcoming features will be first released within our Alpha Club to our uh, Alpha Club NFT holders. Um, also, we are going to be adding rewards for like um, uh, earlier, we showed the impact score. So we have leaderboard uh, within reactions. Um, so we will have a pool for rewards for that as well. Any final question from anyone? We, we haven't really got, have any incentives for uh, people buying uh, wine tokens initially, though we had uh, last year, we, we did a, a, a wine drop 
uh, when we distributed a, well over a thousand bottles of wine to token holders. And so we'll be doing some interesting things that especially uh, looking forward to uh, events like FCC this year um, for token holders and for people that are participating. We'll be doing something special. Um, this is about creating liquidity out of liquid and uh, having something delicious to drink while we're talking about. I do like, you know, all the metaphors you have about wine drops and, you know, liquidity mining. <laughs> Those are really, really motivational for us. <laughs> well, guys, um, thank you very much. Uh, Gia, Mike, uh, Greg, Millie, everyone who participated. Um, we're super excited about what you are building. Um, we can't wait to see where you are going to take all this. And we are very happy to be able to support you. Um, just from, from my end, just one final thing. Um, so can you see my screen? Um, so applications are already open for the second batch of the Kleros Incubator. Um, so now feel free to go to our website, um, the incubator kleros.io slash incubator, and there's a form that you can apply to, and then, well, that's how it starts. And then, um, well, there's a whole process of due diligence and interviews and, and all that. And um, feel free to apply, to share this with your friends and to everyone that you, you think would uh, enjoy participating in the, in the incubator and well, and hopefully we can support them into building the future of, of Web3. So that's it for, for today, uh, guys. Um, thank you all uh, very much. And we will share this recording very soon. Uh, in the social network so you can watch it again and, and share it so thank you guys uh, and uh, see you on the pixels bye bye thank you bye bye very much goodbye thank you, thank you everyone